to Philly Sports Unfiltered. Guys, today we are looking at the Eagles offensive depth chart. It is looking like it is going to be a really good season for the Philadelphia Eagles. We are stacked on both sides of the ball. And today what I want to do is I want to go through all the position groups on the offense. I want to look at who we have and I want to talk about what are our strongest groups and what are our weakest groups. All right, let's jump straight into this. So the first position group I want to look at is quarterback. Obviously, QB1, we have Jalen Hurts. QB2, we have Gardner Minshew. And QB3, we have the new addition of Carson Strong. Overall, I think it depends on what you believe in Jalen Hurts. But if you believe, like I believe, that Jalen is getting ready to make a big jump in this coming offseason, this quarterback room is looking really, really strong. There is a case to be made that Gardner Minshew is the best backup quarterback in the NFL. I actually feel like Gardner Minshew has starting potential, maybe bottom of the league starting potential, um, but this is a really great backup quarterback. And Carson Strong, this was a great pick by Howie. Uh, actually, he's, he's just a great pickup. Uh, in, um, he was undrafted, but he was a great pickup. Uh, we're going to get into his stats in a minute here. But for me, I think the quarterback room, I think it's strong. Jalen Hurts, very positive on. I think he's going to make a huge leap. If you guys didn't watch my previous video on why Jalen Hurts is getting ready to have a breakout season, please go ahead and give that a look. Gardner Minshew, I think we're set here. And depending on how much Carson Strong develops, I mean, words out of OTA are really good on him, obviously has injury issues. Uh, I feel like the birds might make a move and try to uh, recoup a draft pick for Gardner Minshew. Wouldn't put it past them. We will see what shakes out there. But overall for this season, I'm feeling really good about the quarterback room. Love the depth that we have. Uh, I think it's a really strong group. And, you know, if Jalen Hurts for some reason doesn't end up panning out, doesn't become the man that we think he can be, uh, we still have a war chest of picks and next draft, we can always assess that problem. But really quick, I just want to jump into Carson Strong. Obviously, he was uh, an undrafted pickup. And um, if you're looking at these numbers, you, you're, you're probably wondering, you know, damn, this guy put up some serious numbers. I mean, he was in Nevada. Okay, let's look at every year, uh, 2019, 63% completions, and 2020 and 2021, over 70% completions. He threw for almost 3,000, over 4,000 yards, 27 touchdowns, 36 touchdowns, four interceptions, eight interceptions. I mean, this guy, he is extremely accurate. He has an absolute cannon of an arm. Uh, and he can dissect the defense. He can throw touchdowns. These stats, you look at them and it blows your mind. Like, why was this guy not drafted? Obviously, uh, he has a lot of injury issues. He has a lot of injury concerns. But if he can overcome them and he can be healthy, this can be a phenomenal pickup for a really solid backup quarterback for the next several years and the news coming out of OTAs was that Carson Strong was turning heads hey right now it's a QB3 we don't need to get too crazy of it but again another great move by Howie Roseman now let's get into the tight ends tight ends at uh tight end one we have Dallas Goddard tight end number two we have Grant Calcaterra and tight end number three it's somewhere a tie between Jack Stoll and Tyree Jackson but with this kind of hair how could you give to anybody else besides Jack Stoll? Uh, so how do I feel about this position group? Obviously, uh, I do think it's really top heavy. Um, I personally feel that this is one of our weaker position groups. Um, I'm very high on Goddard. Um, I do think that he's going to have a tremendous season. And I'm also pretty high on the upside of Grant Calcaterra. And we're going to get into his stats in a moment here. And we're going to talk about maybe why he there's some interesting, um, you know, factors on why he he might actually be a pretty decent uh, tight end number two. And I think uh, Jack Stoll definitely we can use him in a pinch. I, I like what I see with him and Tyree Jackson again untapped potential it is to be seen what he will be in the league but it's good to have him in the tight end room nonetheless now let's get into a little bit about grant calcaterra okay so he had uh, a couple years at oklahoma before transferring over to smu and 
you know, you look at his numbers, they don't really jump off the page at you. You see, okay, 400 yards receiving in 12 games, 465 yards in 11 games. Okay, that's not bad. You know, four touchdowns, six touchdowns, three touchdowns. The stats don't really overwhelm you. But Grant Calcaterra is another player that was riddled by injuries and he suffered from concussions. And if you listen to him talk, those issues affected, obviously, with him not only missing games, but it also affected the way that he was approaching games. Because if we look at a scouting report here, uh, there's a lot to love. Um, it has long arms to help him overcome his smaller size. He's not that small. He's six foot three, so he is a pretty big body. Obviously, there's tight ends that are bigger. Um, very good straight line speed. Uh, has the ability to stretch the field on vertical routes. That's great. He can pull away from defenders. Uh, can create explosive p- plays after the catch. That's phenomenal. Uh, and he's he's quite athletic enough to shed blockers. Now, negatives. He's not as big as some of the other tight ends. And he's a body catcher. He doesn't catch the ball with his hands. For me, that is the biggest issue. Because if you really want to be a great tight end that's going to catch touchdowns in the end zone, you cannot be a body catcher. You have to bring the ball in with your hands. But what is to like is the explosion, the ability to shred blocks, uh, and the ability to make plays after the catch. I think that he's going to be a good addition. Uh, He says that he's focused. He says that he's over the concussion issues. Uh, If those things hold to be true, this could be another steal. Now, let's get into the wide receiver room. There is a lot to like here with the addition of A.J. Brown. Obviously, A.J. Brown, he completely changes the complexion of this room. A.J. Brown is that stud, big body, T.O.-like monster. Uh, He's going to destroy smaller cornerbacks. Uh, He's going to will his way into the end zone. Uh, He has speed. He can be a deep threat. He can beat you short. He can beat you in every way that there is the beat a man on defense, okay? So A.J. Brown is a massive addition and he's going to take tremendous pressure off of Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith turning heads in OTAs already. This man is a monster. He is a technician. He is a tactician. I think he's going to have a big jump this year. I mean, you have stud and stud. You have one A and one B in the wide receiver room between A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. It definitely makes it one of the best groups uh, of the bunch. And then Quez Watkins. I, I, I'm telling you, uh, we'll, we'll look at uh, Quez's stats in a moment here. But there is a lot to be excited about Quez Watkins. If you watched this man develop last year, uh, you know, year one, he was just a gimmick, you know, deep threat guy. He's somebody that could run, you know, 50 yards, catch a ball every once in a while. He didn't do that much. But last year, he showed you not only can he run routes, But he can get up there and he can high point a catch on a ball. There was plays where he went up over two, three defenders and he came down with it. He has a knack for coming down with the football a bit in the way that, um, you know, DeAndre Hopkins. He's just a guy that has a knack for going up and grabbing. And I'm not saying he's DeAndre Hopkins, obviously, but as a wide receiver three, I really like him a lot. And um, I think he's going to improve. And then we have... Uh, Zach Passel, I think, who will come in and be a reliable uh, wide receiver for. But I think this is one of our best groups. Um, really, really like this room. So, as I said with Quez Watkins, okay, we look at 2022. He had seven receptions for only 106 yards and he had one TD. Now, last year, he had 43 receptions and 647 yards, still only one touchdown. But I mean, the amount, the increase in the production from year one to year two, from going to seven catches to 43, going from 106 yards to 647. Obviously, there's a difference in game played. He played only six games in 2022 and 2020. He played 17 games in 2021. So that accounts for some of it. But he got a lot better. He got a lot better. He's a lot better, well-rounded player. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Quez goes for something like 800, 850 yards and maybe four touchdowns this year. I think that would be a good number for Quez. Now, getting into the running back room, uh, uh, this is another room that I do really like. Uh, Miles Sanders, obviously, he has issues with uh, injury. He has some issues with ball security. But Miles, he's a man on a mission this year. Uh, He wants a contract. I think he wants to stick in town. 
uh, he's kind of pissed off. Um, he wants to show people that he's an RB1, and I think he's going to come in with a chip on his shoulder, and I think he's going to have a really good year if he stays healthy. I like Miles Sanders a lot. Uh, I do think because of his injury issues, I think the birds will end up being able to keep him on the roster uh, beyond this season. I, I feel like they're going to do extension for him. I don't think he's going to get a huge amount of money, maybe something in the range of four to five, five million dollars a year, something in that range. And I think he will take it because of the injury issues. Now, Kenneth Gainwell, we saw a lot of great things from him last season as a rookie. Um, really gate, great catcher, really good route runner. Uh, and he also has a nose for getting into the end zone. Boston Scott must have the same thing. This guy, he just scores touchdowns. Uh, very, very reliable. Um, I actually really like this running back room a lot. And I feel like Sanders and Gainwell uh, are going to be with us for a couple of more years. Boston Scott, you know, we'll see what happens. But this is another, this is a room that there's a lot to like. So I think it is a fairly strong position group. It's not one of the top two, in my opinion. Uh, now we go to the offensive line, and this is where the big boys are, okay? I think by far, uh, it, it, it's hard to even argue. I think this is the strength of our team. I think not only is it the best position group on offense, this might be the best offensive line in all of football, okay? You got Jordan Mailata, an absolute monster young stud landon dick dickerson an absolute monster young stud jason kelsley future hall of famer for me i think he's the top center in the league still uh if you know somebody better write in the comment section below sayamalo really really solid and lane johnson another monster he's getting a little bit older but then you look at some of the backups that we have on the team some of our depth pieces andre dillard had a really really solid season last year jack driscoll you can put this guy anywhere and now cam beef jerky <laughs> beef jergens okay we have him on the team now and i think not only are they going to run him as a backup center but i think they're going to cross train him at guard as well there's just an incredible amount of talent i don't have to say too much it speaks for itself so now i want to ask you what do you think is the best position group of the bunch for the offense? Leave me a comment in the comment section below. I'm saying offensive line. What is the worst position group of the offense? I am saying for me, I think it is tight end. And who do you think is your breakout season candidate? I'm going to put two names onto the list. I'm going to say Quez Watkins and Jalen Hurts. I think Jalen Hurts is going to have a big time breakout year. And I think Quez Rot Watkins is going to have a breakout in the sense that he is going to show um, that he's he's a real starter. Like he is a we real wide receiver three in this league and he's going to be around to stay. He's not a one year wonder. Uh, I think that is what we are going to see this year. But let me know in the comment section below. Best position group, worst position group, who is your bait breakout candidate? Let them all uh, in the comment section below. That is all I got for this one, guys. If you enjoyed the content today, go ahead, smash the like button, give me a sub. I will catch you guys in the next video. Go Birds!